Cause lonely, you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies when I go to see the night. Hey, my name's Trevor. What's up? I'm Val. We're Fiji Blue, and welcome to our creator session. We're here to play a few songs for you guys and uh, talk about things that are super meaningful to us in this world of music and our lives. Uh, one of those things includes honesty and lyric writing. The importance of collaboration in music and on our musical journey and in our career and how sometimes it's better to not get too attached to the things that you're working on because sometimes the side project actually becomes the successful one. I can feel those butterflies when I go to see the night. Today I get to share one of my favorite new bands that I discovered in 2021. Fiji Blue, made up of Trevor Deering and Val Fritz. And they met in 2017 while they were studying at Berklee School of Music. Trevor was a songwriting major and Val was studying contemporary writing and production. And they made music together while they were in school and then finally formed Fiji Blue years later when Trevor moved to LA and Val brought him off the streets graciously. And you will get that reference later. But before I I say more, let me start by saying that they aren't just one of my favorite bands, but also easily some of my favorite new people. They both just radiate kindness and are just super cool. Okay, so now that I said that, let me set the stage by saying that if you haven't heard Fiji Blue before, what you're about to experience is really special because it feels like it's in its own class, like it's its own genre. And when you hear their sound, you can almost instantly say, ah, that is Fiji Blue, which to me is the magic of this project. In this session, we get to hear about their experience as a duo, how their strengths allow each of them to show up fully and a bunch more. So let's get back to it. Here is Fiji Blue on Creator Sessions. What if I wake up happy? What if I wake up sad? Sorry if I said something, something that made you mad. Wishing that I could call you. Sorry, my service bad. My bad. When I wake up, you're not next to me. Guess I'm missing all your energy. That's all I want. Promise I am not your enemy. Just need another memory That's all I want Cause all I want is you Is you It takes two Cause all I want is you Is you It takes two Cause all I want is Tell me there's a flower in the shade ever feel a little jealousy Does it ever go away? All I want is you to answer me right now Just dance with me right now Just dance with me right now When I wake up, you're not next to me Guess I'm missing all your energy That's all I want That's all I want Promise I am not your enemy I just need another memory that's all I want Cause all I want is you Is you It takes two Cause all I want is you Is you And all I want is you
Cause all I want is you This was It Takes Two <laughs> um, A song we wrote Two years ago, I think Yeah, yeah, yeah With our good friend Peter Fenn and Orion And I feel like the thing that's really special about that song is We kind of had just a bunch of minds working All in different places, I feel To come out with the outcome of this song Which is a combination of so many things yeah, it's a combination of a lot of influences, which I always feel like makes the best music, honestly. You know, the song is called It Takes Two, and I feel like it's a perfect representation of, you know, collaboration and um, multiple people coming together and making a product that makes the product, honestly, the best. It's better <laughs> than working on, you know, working alone, and I think this is what this project also embodies. Um, me and Trevor were working, uh, had projects before this, and working alone, and when we came together, I think, um, the music and everything around it yeah. became better. Yeah, right. We, we pulled from inspirations on our own side to create what we have. This and um, yeah, it takes two relationships and also just in every aspect of life. Um, sometimes life is better with another person, so it's always good to collaborate. And this one was a, a major collaboration, and it's a, it's a fun one. It's an emotional dance one, so we love we love those types of songs. <laughs> but yeah, emotional awesome. dance. Emotional dance, sad. That's the vibe. <laughs> the start of this project, um, it's, it seems like forever ago, but it really wasn't that long ago. Um, Val and I, we met at Berklee College of Music. Um, I was a songwriting major. Um, what was it again? Exactly. A lot of letters. What is it called? mp and &E, right? Contemporary Writing and Production what? was the actual name. Okay. So there wasn't a lot of letters. <laughs> CWP. CWP is what they called it. Um, nonetheless, um, we met because you were doing a DJ and producer project at the time. You can touch yeah. on that a little bit more if you want. Um. Yeah, so I got to Berkeley actually wanting to become a film scoring major in the beginning. And uh, I was always producing. Um, I remember I started producing when I was 12. I had a band um, while I was still living in Germany. I was born and raised in Germany till I was 15. And uh, I started recording our demos in my basement and that was kind of like my entry point into production. And then, you know, as I moved to America, I had a lot of time because I had no friends and I didn't know the language. <laughs> and so I filled my time making music and recording. And so when I got to Berkeley, I realized that I really do enjoy production and working with artists. And that's when I started a producer project, producer DJ project. It was in like 2015, 2016, EDM era, um, future bass. Um, I was really inspired by Flume and Disclosure and um, that was their like height, um, peak career, I think. Um, and yeah, so I was producing and I was doing the producer DJ project and so I was working with a lot of different artists and singers singing on my tracks and one of them ended up Trevor Deering. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we, we started to record and write songs. Um, that way and we met in 2017 i think yep. was our first session and i have to say too i always have to tell this story um i was going through a lot of things at that point i was super sad um <laughs> more so than usual as one as a <laughs> songwriter would say he's still super sad <laughs> <laughs> hey it is what it is um anyways uh at that moment i had gotten invited to a party and nine actually probably like let me emphasize the the ratio 99 out of 100 times i'd typically say no at that time and i said yes i'll go um and i finally got to meet this guy face to face and um from that moment we scheduled a session wrote our first song together and it was it was so quick and so easy i don't want to talk about what that song was called <laughs> but anyways it was a super super cool moment um and it really felt like i met somebody um who was super passionate and um, i enjoyed making music with and from that point, we made a bunch of music together, but you had moved to LA, I was still in school. Um, but the second I moved to LA the following year, um, I remember this man, he, this guy's a saint, he takes so many people under his wing and sometimes does more for them than even himself sometimes, which is a selfless man. Um, nonetheless, the first week I was here, I was thinking that I'd be like grueling, trying to find stuff to do in LA, but this man found me a week here was pulling me into sessions with Peter um, Fennigan. Took him off the side of the street. <laughs> took him into my home. <laughs> gave him some bread and water. <laughs> what more do you need? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> anyways, 
we started making music again and um, honestly made so many songs to the point to where we felt like we were creating something that didn't fit in Trubber Deering or Valentine. And we're like, let's make a project. Um, and Fiji Blue inspired from a long, long time of, I would say, I don't even know how to put it. A lot of talks, a lot of music, a lot of just planning, starting from scratch. And um, yeah, this project really is the classic side project turned main project, which I think is a really cool point. Um, that sometimes what you're doing, as tough as, as, tough as it is to hear, um, it might not always be the end goal. Um, and it was really cool to see something that we worked so hard on, even though it was at first the side thing, um, become so successful. And uh, we're both extremely grateful for that. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the short emphasis. Yeah, and I think uh, another point that this brings up, which if you're an artist or a creator that's struggling to write music, that maybe is, you know, maybe it's not successful or struggle to, to write music that you really enjoy. I think what helped us actually f get to the point of making music that was authentic to us was that we found in each other another person that we could really bounce ideas off of and get to know and that he brings out, you know, the best in me and I try and bring the best out of him. And so we reached this point of like mutual authenticity, um, which I think is something so important because I think the listener subconsciously hears that when they listen to music, you know. Um, so many times you can hear or you can tell when artists are just, you know, singing a song that was pitched to them or um, they're just writing about a generic situation, you know, boy meets girl, falls in love, blah, blah, blah. And it's not actually authentic to them and to their story and if you're struggling to write songs like that I think what helps is just connecting with a person that you can trust with your life story and with the things that you're going through you know it's almost like a therapy session writing a song um, and then actually being authentic and writing lyrics that are authentic to you um, sometimes it's really hard to actually put into words by yourself what you're going through and what you want to write about um, and bouncing that off of somebody else that you trust can help you talk about that kind of stuff in your music in your songs and help you open up and be vulnerable to through music uh, perfectly said and us specifically I remember you were there at the end of my first relationship and at the start of my current and it's been years so I feel like we've both heard um, almost everything in each other's life and I feel like that helps um, in being authentic because you know everything we're trying to do is as cheesy as it sounds just to be as real as you can um, and I feel like again like you said people hear that even if it's subconsciously you know people want to believe what you're saying and it's even easier to believe if it's true yeah and I think the listener wants to connect to the to an artist and wants to connect to their story yeah. um, and then relate to them in that way in any type of art really um, and if you're not if you're not able to be vulnerable and talk about the things that you're going through then it's hard for people to relate to you because you're not actually you're not saying something that is true you know you're just making something up and I think the listener will feel that and they won't be able to relate as much to you as an artist as when you're actually talking about your unique story you know because no one's story on this planet is the same and um, I think people enjoy relating and listening to other people's stories and knowing that they're not alone, you know, it's like, oh, you're also going through this, oh, this artist also went through a breakup, you know what I mean, they're not invincible, I think that's really comforting for a lot of people to hear, so, you know, this is just a little piece of advice. Are you ready for the next one? I am ready. All right, cool. One second. Let's have to change this preset, and here we go. This one's called Affection. Um, the one thing I have to say about this song is it's actually one of my favorites. Uh, I have affection tattooed on the back of my arm. <laughs> and that's why it's my favorite. <laughs> and yeah, we're in the middle of Hollywood right now on the rooftop. So if you hear any sirens or trucks or helicopters, it's uh, just part of the song, part of the ambience, <laughs> part of the fun. <laughs> All right, let's go. Look 
Look up at the sky, ask you why are you all so afraid? Never thought that I could describe such a lonely a place. Now there's all this space, nothing can replace. Letting go of you was my one mistake. Counting every day, no, I'm not okay. I just wanna say I need affection. Doesn't matter what you say. Cause now that I don't have it, I only miss it every day. And I need affection. Doesn't matter what you say. Cause now that I don't have it I only miss it every day Look up at the sky, ask you why are you always so far? Never thought that I needed light just to see in the dark Now there's all this space, nothing can replace Letting go of you was my one mistake Counting every day, no I'm not okay I just wanna say I need affection Doesn't matter what you say Cause now that I don't have it, I only miss it every day That song to me holds a really, really, really special place in my heart. Um, I feel like it's just like the rawest and simplest way of basically saying you need somebody. Um, you need affection, basically. The chorus is as simple as that. Like, there's no, there's no other way to say it. Um, you need affection, you need We all do. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody needs some affection. And yeah, we wrote this early 2020. And, you know, during a lot of uncertainty, I feel like, you know, we just really, we're trying to emphasize how simple um, some of the things we need the most can be sometimes, you know. Everybody was scared and you weren't able to even get close to someone, you know, and we didn't even know what was going to happen. And so, you know, we realized, oh, you, all of a sudden you can't hang out with anyone anymore in your close circle and people that you actually love. And so, um, you know, we decided at that point that the only pl way that we could get through this and the only way that we could, you know, express our anxiety and our fear in that uncertain time was to make music. And this song was the first one that we wrote. I think, and I really hope it comes across um, to the listeners and in the music and the lyrics and the story that we're telling in the song. So that's affection. <laughs> so this next one is called Waves. Um, another favorite of ours. I say every song is our favorite. Uh, it is what it is. We like our music. <laughs> we're only playing the favorites tonight, obviously. Yeah, that is true. Um, yeah, this one's called Waves. Um, to me, this song, everyone says it's, it's the complaining song. Um, but in the most beautiful way. Um, I feel like this song is about how you can do everything in the world for somebody and somehow it's still not enough. Um, you could give them the ocean and they would complain about the waves. <laughs> it's the main, main mantra of that. We wrote this song with our friend Peter Fenn and he's a dear collaborator of us and I think what we realized over the you know years that we've been writing together now is that it really is just so important that you find the people that you collaborate with the best and uh, you know that you work with the best and everybody has their own unique style you know when I met Trevor and when we started writing there was I definitely noticed that you know he has a certain style of writing and lyric writing and things that he likes to talk about um, and you hone in on that over the years and you get to know each other and I think that's when the best music comes you know there's a, when I first moved to LA I did a lot of sessions with a different a lot of different artists and working with different people and the best music really came when you just work with your friends and work with the people that know you the best and who you know the best because 
you just know their style and you it, it just becomes so easy and so fun and you know I think just finding your people finding your crew and just working with them and having fun is when the best product and the best music comes out yeah. just what I found and um, that was a fun day too I yeah it was a really that. fun day absolutely even though the song is super sad in some way but I don't even really remember writing the song <laughs> <laughs> it was just hanging out at the end of the day the song came out yeah and lyrically too um, and this is a this is a super short sweet song and to me I love that my favorite songs are the ones that tell the most in the simplest of ways so this one's called Waves is there something after there is nothing to say We're just moving in circles, but we're losing our shape. And oh, oh, where did all the good things go? And oh, oh, I'm falling out of love so slow. It's a beautiful morning, don't throw it away. If I gave you the sunset, you wish for the rain. You even notice what I'm trying to say If I gave you the ocean, you complain about the waves Guess there's nothing feels like I'm not doing this right Like a star that slowly disappears in the night and oh, oh, where did all the good things go? Oh, I'm falling out of love too slow It's a beautiful morning, don't throw it away If I gave you the sunset, you wish for the rain Do you even notice what I'm trying to say? If I gave you the ocean, you complain about the waves It's a beautiful morning, don't throw it away If I gave you the sunset, you wish for the rain even notice what I'm trying to say If I gave you the ocean You complain about the waves <laughs> Cool. Awesome. That one was called Waves. Waves. Yes. And it's about falling out of love. Slow. <laughs> We love waves, we love the ocean. This project is very much a California born and raised project. <laughs> As you can tell. <laughs> um, and we love going to the beach. I actually picked up surfing um, in the last year and a half. So the ocean is a very special place for me and us. Um, and it inspires a lot of our music and our vibe. Absolutely. Driving down the PCH, windows down, <laughs> wind blowing in the hair. <laughs> That's what the music is made for. Absolutely. So this song was the perfect combination because now we have a song that literally talks about, even if it's in a sad way, one of our favorite things, which is the ocean. And I feel like a lot of people make metaphors about the ocean, you know, and I feel like this one's, this one's cool. It's a simple way of trying to explain basically that uh, it doesn't always work out, you know, and that's life. Also, I have to talk about when we recorded the, the lyric video for this one, because we literally rented a boat. Oh yeah, that was fun. <laughs> this is fun. A lot of our, um, our videos, if you guys know, we shoot um, VHS videos and lyric videos for our songs. And rented a boat, went out, and it was honestly probably the most perfect day. I don't know how, perfect sunset. There was dolphins near our boat. We hopped in with them. Um, and yeah, everything just seemed to line up. So it's cool when you're shooting a video for a sad song. It's so beautiful. It's yeah, when we started there. the project, we, um we knew that we were going to do a visual for every song because we knew like, you know, YouTube and it's just nice when you can attach a visual to each song. Um, but we, we didn't have the budget to do a huge music video for every single song. So um, we both got really into VHS and like were inspired by different artists who were already kind of using VHS um, footage. Um, and so we basically decided that for a lot of our songs, we were just going to pick a fun activity and do that and go out and do that activity and bring our cameras and then in the end we had a music video visual that was pretty you know it was authentic because we were just hanging out and just having a fun and yeah having a fun it. activity in a beautiful like 
yeah, in a beautiful setting. For waves, it was a boat, and <laughs> for another one, we did a hot air balloon, <laughs> which was cool. Yeah, it's never planned. We never know what's going to happen, but I think that's what makes it so special. And obviously, film too is so nostalgic, and you know, we have that that feeling we try to attach in our music of always feel like you're missing something, um, whether it's good or bad. So. Creator Sessions is brought to you by ConvertKit, the creator marketing platform. And at ConvertKit, we believe that the future belongs to creators like you. That's why we invest in this series. By sharing the more intimate details of the creator journey, we inspire and encourage more creators to follow their passion because creator shape culture and culture shapes the world. So whatever your craft, our creator marketing platform can help you share it with the world. Click the link to learn more about how ConvertKit can help you earn a living online. I feel like this next one also, Butterflies, is about missing something, um, most uh, specifically another person. Um, this song to us actually changed a lot, I feel like. We released this song back in May of 2020, and um, it kind of, kind of took off a little bit, which was crazy. Um, but talking on the VHS aspect, one day um, we were told no by a photographer um, and we said, screw it, we're gonna go out, take the photos ourselves, shoot the video ourselves, do everything. And it, it, um, it really started the whole DIY thing for us and it was a cool moment. Um, and this song specifically, Butterflies, um, there's a line in there that says, uh, lonely you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies when I go to sleep at night. And it's basically about that feeling you have um, when you're missing somebody but even though they're far away, they still give you that special feeling. Um, and basically about wanting to fly and be with them, um, even if it's not possible. Yeah. You can tell you've been in a long distance relationship for three years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you've had to hurt, you've had to hear every, every, every moment, but nonetheless, hey, sadness brings uh, beautiful music, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so this one's called Butterflies and it's about missing somebody. Where do you bloom? I think I saw your face on the moon I promise I'll be with you as soon as I find a way up Cause you, you found it then a kiss on the phone There's things about you I'll never know I hope that one day we'll be in love when you're not far away Really make me wanna fly And cross my heart and hope to die Cause lonely you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies When I go to see at night yeah, When I go to see at night Yeah, lonely you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies when I go to see the night I finally know the reason why I'm never really satisfied Waking up a paradise Without you by my side Imagine I walk through your doorway Imagine skipping all the foreplay Imagine all the stars in one place Cause you You really make me wanna fly You cross my heart and hope to die Cause lonely you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies When I go to see the night When I go to see the night Yeah, lonely you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies When I go to see the night You really make me wanna fly Cross my heart and hope to die Cause lonely you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies When I go to see the night When I go to see the night yeah, Lonely you're the reason why I can feel those butterflies When I go to see the night
<laughs> cool. I wasn't expecting those strings. That was a surprise to me. <laughs> Super cool. Damn. Yeah, that song. Oh, we, it's probably the song, the song we've sung the most. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely a fan favorite. But yeah, I love it. I feel like we always knew that song was special. And I feel like it's super important, obviously, to play your music to other people, get their opinions. And that one, for some reason, was the one that oh, people always were like that one. And we knew too. And there's something about trusting your gut um, when making decisions on what comes out. Um, and I feel like as much as other people's opinions matter, at the same side on the other side, you should know um, what's true to you. I it was, yeah, I remember it was like a one week, it was like, maybe the most productive week of our career so far <laughs> we made like in one week we made maybe like seven or eight songs um yeah and this one was part of it we were just in the flow we were in the zone and uh i don't know what happened that week but um fiji. yeah this one this one came out it was <laughs> fiji Blue the Baby legendary was fiji week <laughs> <laughs> we literally wrote we wrote home day by day butterflies try again which never came out um and another one too Regardless, 95 at night. 95 at night, yeah. A very spiritual week, just <laughs> locked in your North Hollywood room. Um, yeah, came over every day, and this one was a special one. I feel like it just came so quickly, and um, yeah, it's a beautiful song. I love it so much. No, yeah. it's the girlfriend's favorite too, obviously. <laughs> My advice lyrically and on the songwriting side of things, I feel like it's very easy to overthink. Um, I'm still working on it myself, but sometimes you're in those moments, and I feel like those first ideas. The ones you sing the first time always end up being the best, in my opinion. Yeah, I remember um, a lot of the times, um, you know, we'll come up with chords and I'll jam on the chords and he'll kind of just like sing different melodies. And I'm pretty sure in this song, it was just the first melodies that came out. Yeah. Um, and also in this whole, in the song, this is something that there's just a lot of melodies that repeat and that really just um, go through the whole song like the... That, that melody is just, you can hear it throughout the whole song, you hear it in the drop, and it's just something that you can at, attach yourself to, which I think is super important to have in any, any song. It's just simple melodies that repeat and that you can attach yourself to um, in that song. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I really feel like the cool thing about this song, too, on the lyric side of things, is, you know, the title is called Butterflies. And I try to find as many ways as I can talk about basically not being on the ground. You know, you're talking about looking up and seeing them in the moon. You promise you'll be up with them as soon as you can. Um, and just like the feeling of distance. Um, one of my favorite lines in that is, you're farther than a kiss on the phone. Um, I feel like that's kind of a hint at like a FaceTime like thing, you know, like it just doesn't, it doesn't ever feel as right as the right thing. So um, Yeah, and it's just yeah. authentic to that situation that you were currently in. Yeah. Um, you know, I think me being more on the production side and you're obviously on the you know you're singing the songs and i think it's important that you're singing something that you believe that you're going through so that it feels authentic and that you're writing about things that you're currently experiencing yeah. and i think that's you can feel that in the song um that you were actually going through that situation and being away from someone and facetiming you know and then you just put it in a poetic little package <laughs> exactly um and I have to say also on the side of this, it's always nice to have, uh, be with somebody who challenges you too, even musically or creatively. Um, I feel like a lot of the melodies I come up with in these songs wouldn't come about unless it was this guy on his keyboard doing all this funky stuff that makes my brain have to basically, you know, travel a different way than I'm used to. So it's cool. I owe a lot of these obviously to this man right here and his production mind. <laughs> and the funky stuff that I play. <laughs> Absolutely. Whenever you're hearing like the sad indie stuff, um, you know, it's coming more from, from my place and my head. And whenever you hear the dancier stuff, um, it's coming from this guy. Obviously, we both love um, both sides of it. But yeah, on the EP, we kind of had How Can I Tell You. It was like the me song and 95 at Night was the Val song. Um, and yeah, I feel like it's really cool to be able to touch on both sides of music we love while also at the same time blending both of our um, influences together to create this project ultimately which is the combination of dance and sad stuff, <laughs> which is cool. That's why I think it's cool. And it's really special to be with somebody who challenges me in a different way um, musically and also creates this whole world um, with me that we did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we just wake up. We're like, well, are we feeling sad or indie? Or no, are we feeling indie or dancey today? Yeah. And sometimes it's both. And sometimes it's one or the other. <laughs> 
I also think it's um, just important to experiment, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, we both lean, we both have specialties and we lean, you know, we have different influences of music that we listened to growing up, you know. Um, we grew up differently. We grew up in different parts of the world listening to different types of music. Um, but I think it's just so important to have an open mind and experiment in every side of things, you know, and not just get stuck in your own way and in your own taste, you know, and have an open mind to let other people, you know, take you into a different world that you might not really know yet and you might not, I don't know, maybe you don't even really like it yet, but maybe once you're actually in it and you experiment, you might find things that you really enjoy about it and learn along the way and grow along the way. I think that's um, the most important thing and the most beautiful thing about collaborations and about music. Um, there's not just one way, um, there's not just like one genre, you know, that's big or that you're supposed to make. Um, it's just it's just creating art for people to enjoy and to listen to and it's not about your own ego or you know whatever you want um, I think it's about letting yourself take you to different places and grow from that and learn and um, yeah develop your taste and expand your horizons and I think you know we constantly try to do that in this project perfectly said honestly absolutely and I can't wait to go to a German dance club with you one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. But yeah. If I had one piece of advice for any creator, it would be to find your place, find what you enjoy doing the most and work on that and try to bring yourself and your unique spin into what you're doing. Um, I think then you'll be the most successful and you'll have the most fun. I would say um, just be as honest as you can in the art that you're pursuing. Um, I feel like people can feel authenticity and feel how deep you're involved in what you're trying to pursue. And I really feel like it's super important to just give 100% of yourself into what you love. And uh, somehow that love is going to find its way back to you. I believe that. We're Fiji Blue. Thank you so much for joining us again. You can find us anywhere you listen to music by typing in Fiji Blue. You can find us on Instagram, any of your preferred social media. Um, come connect with us. Slide into our DMs. Um, we would love to connect with you. Again, so grateful to be here. Thanks for having us. All right, friends, I hope that you have loved this session as much as I have loved sharing it. Now we are gonna do the closing a little differently and recap some of my favorite things from the episode. Number one, and most importantly, Trevor and Val are very cool and kind people, and I just feel like it's important that you really know that. Number two, sometimes you have got to let go of the current project because it's really the side project that has all the potential. Number three, authenticity is something that you can feel and these guys do that really well. Number four, the consistent juxtaposition from this project is one of the many things that make it work. Sad, chill dance music. Number five, Make sure that you aren't afraid of experimenting. I think Val actually said it best when he said, there isn't just one way and make sure that you don't let your ego get in the way. So we are gonna dig into those a little bit more on the podcast, so make sure to check it out next week when it drops. As always, I am Haley. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time here on Creator Sessions.